Oof. Two things changed the moment the Wuthering Heights Manor appeared over the horizon. Mirror, I need a mirror. Anyone got a mirror? A come on, anyone. What has gotten into you, Heathcliff? This mirror isn't... One was Heathcliff, who was suddenly overcome with intense anxiety. And the other was the weather that grew darker and tempestuous all of a sudden. What a terrifying noise. Was the weather here always this awful? It was always this windy, yeah, almost like a constant tempest. But the thunder and lightning... Well, the weather of Brothering Heights was always this awful, thunder or not. There really is one massive manor, if it looks that big from this far away. Sharon can't see well. Not sure if this is right place, but we're here. Lightning goes boom, eyes go ow. I feel ya. This manor looked as though it came straight out of a dark gothic tale full of mysteries. I was half expecting to hear a haunting cry echoing through from its windows. So, are we just waiting for Virgilus to go off the bus again? <laughs> then, when hasn't that been the case, Manager Bud? I mean, it's not like we're digging into a lobotomy corp branch or entering one of the wings, right? It's just a manor. I don't see what's stopping him from coming with us. Now off the bus. Sharon and I will wait outside until we're done with our mission. None of the sinners were hiding their dissatisfaction with Virgilus. Some of them even standing with their arms crossed. By the looks of your faces, clearly you all collectively have something to say. I, of course not. <laughs> I, I would hardly ever dare to challenge thee. Well, maybe not every sinner. We've gone through a lot of things, survived various trials and tribulations, tribulations that could have been easily handled had Virgilus been there with us. So, Virgilus, uh, looks like Ishmael decided to step up as our representative. You introduced yourself to us as our guide, didn't you? So what kind of guy just tosses everyone at the start of the journey and goes off on their own with the bus driver? Where are you guys even going? I want to make it clear that I'm not being a hard ass for no good reason. I'm asking you because I want to trust you. After all, we're technically all in the same boat. We're co workers. I'd say that the least you could do is tell us where we're headed. Virgilus held a silence for a moment. His brows were not as furrowed as they usually are, which was the only indicator to me that he wasn't as offended to hear this as I thought he'd be. Just like you sinners who join this company via your individual contracts, I also signed a contract with specific clauses, conditions I must abide. Uh, the company made the a color of most illustrious, sign a contract as well. Of course I did. Why would I be babysitting you children on this bus otherwise? I'm not one to work for free. I don't want to bother detailing each and every clause of my contract to you, nor should I. But, Ishmael, I quite like that you use the word trust in your speech. So I believe that you deserve at least a brief explanation. I'm not supposed to retrieve the golden balls myself, nor am I allowed to provide you with any direct support. The contract stipulates that I must leave everything to the manager and the sinners. Why the hell would you sign... Why the hell would you sign a contract like that? As always, it's meaningless to ask me why. Contracts are rarely ever fully understood by those that are not a part of it. 
but what I can tell you is that when I ask you sinners to leave the bus for a mission, I suppose in a way I say it with a lighter heart than I used to. I am no longer concerned that in my desire to fulfill the conditions for every clause of my contract, the manager might be irreversibly hurt. I would be left with nothing, left with nothing were if such a thing were to happen. I have thoughts, but I'll hold them for now. Did he just admit to trusting us more than he used to? Tante, Don't make him repeat something like that, Tante. Especially when someone went through the trouble of expressing their true hidden feelings. Besides... Wait, wait. No, I'm not going in there like this. Nope. Can't do it. Do this. Oi, turn the bus around. Muffy doesn't do U turns. Bollocks, I ain't going back in this manner in these wrinkly rags. Oh, yeah. Every single one of our elaborate plans to dress him up in fancy clothes fell through. Hey, you don't look that bad. If I go back in these rags, those bastards will. Those bastards? Who are they? Bastards that always eye me up and down trying to find a speck of dusk, a single flaw, something to latch onto just to humiliate me. Then gouge out their eyes. Oh, that would be quite a clever solution. What are you even... Looks like Heathcliff is the only one who's taking this seriously. <laughs> the hell is wrong with the pair of you? Quit giggling like that. Good thing we came prepared exactly for this occasion. I couldn't imagine Heath managed to pull this. I couldn't imagine Heath managing to pull off this makeover on his own. Roja and I did some shopping in the back streets before we entered the nest. We were waiting to reveal these just in case there was anything more impressive in the nest, but thanks to the disappointing lack of anything even remotely interesting. We'll just make do with what we picked up earlier. No, wait, in a bloody second. When the two of you went off on your own, no. All you bet back was a whole basket of cookies, wasn't it? Those cookies were a decoy cookie, see? Though some of them did end up as part of my daily substance, of course. Well, I couldn't find the particular brands I used back home, they should be more than enough for a proper fashion makeover. There, come on, can't we keep things nice and happy for once? Let him wear something else other than his uniform just for today. Like, no one wants to meet their old flame while wearing their work clothes, right? Well, I doubt the guy will ever let anything like this. Fine. What? I would prefer it if it, we didn't have to encourage other rogue incident. I preferred if we didn't have to encourage another rogue incident with the back door. Seriously, died. Heathcliff trembled like he was about to give Virgilus a big hug. Now, Heathcliff, close your eyes, relax, and let us take care of everything. Pretend you're at the proverbial peach blossom spring. Wait, don't touch my hair, like... Whoa. Boy, you ain't have that. <gasps> this is so cute! The little chibis! Oh. Heathcliff's getting a makeover. Sometime later. <coughs> uh, uh, um, I think you might have overdone it with the hair. Don't touch it. Don't you even have any idea how hard... Do you have even... I, ugh, I am... I need to go to bed. Do you have... Do you even have any idea how hard Hong Lu worked on that? Where does that go? It's a reunion of the century. We can't possibly let him say hello to his old flame with a big brutish club in his hand. Sir Heathcliff appears a tad more merciful than usual. Mayhaps he shall accept my request should I implore him to purchase me a pint of ice cream. 
The new one looks like he's on the verge of punching me when I make the smallest noises. Lad, please, please don't bring up anything even remotely like that in front of Catherine. Well, I'll be. Clothes really do make them in. Do let me know how this reunion goes. I'll be looking forward to hearing that tale. Uh, sure. So, Heathcliff, I've been meaning to ask this question for a while, and I wanted to know the answer, but I couldn't bring myself to ask him. Why did you leave Wuthering Heights? It's where the love of your life lives, isn't it? Heathcliff, who'd been busily moving about and preparing to leave even the bus, suddenly comes to a halt. I didn't mind it. The, tra the thrashing, starving, the abuse, them treating me like a servant, like I'm beneath them. I didn't mind being treated like I'm nothing more than an afterthought, like I'm some impure trash to be discarded. But I heard... But when I heard what Catherine said, I realized that I no longer had any reason to remain in that manner. Eclid did not elaborate further. Perhaps it wasn't that he didn't, but that he couldn't bring himself to. I didn't dare ask him what he was about to say, so I simply nodded in response. I see. It looks like Sharon's got something to say about your new fit. Hmm. Jared has something to say. Something big. Great. Awesome. Now, Jaron, what do you think? Looks oily and greasy. Jaron doesn't like greasy. Uh, this isn't how I thought it'd go. Jaron's word must have hit him hard. It took quite a bit of convincing for Heath, who was severely discouraged by Jaron's remark to exit the bus. Oh, poor Heath. If I remember correctly, the words from Catherine to some effect, at least book version that got him to leave was basically her confessing more so to Nelly than himself of she wouldn't pick him because he was I can't remember the exact word I need but it it was something to the effect of she had another suitor who was pursuing her one of more nobility for sure or and Nellie was stressing her to basically make a choice because the two, him and Heathcliff, were going at it because they were basically after the same woman. Giant ass love triangle. Since I now also have some extra. I'm gonna see. Well, we got gold. Hey! Hi, Otis! I'll chop you down along with the trees. Oh! I got an ego! Those are rare. Only an ego. Whew. And... Okay, I'm putting this here rather than where I should have put it, which is closer to the start of general theory crafting, which is, um, Catherine definitely seems like should be the main evil. Uh, that seems fairly apparent. There's definitely a lot of focus on her. Um, I don't expect we'll see any of the children related to Wuthering Heights. That's why my focus is on Catherine, her brother, her suitor, her suitor had a sister who Heathcliff also married. Um, I don't expect we'll see any of their children's generation. This is at the point where Catherine decides to marry, Heathcliff leaves, and now Heathcliff is returning. And it's more so after Heathcliff returns and he's in a better view. I guess view might be the bad word for it. 
he doesn't necessarily seem to come back to serve he like he did before and now we're in a similar situation of he's not coming back to serve at Wuthering Heights to be put under the heel expecting to see some version of the little of big brother Ricardo return because what the whole the book of vengeance is basically a piece of paper instead of like the death note death sentence that they were hyping it up to be if Ricardo doesn't show up again in some capacity our little brother other middle finger organization doesn't show up in some level um so that's kind of where I'm at with this um I don't really have too much uh I'm wondering it definitely seems like they're picking from this section of the book but I don't know how close they'll follow it because in theory you can move things around a bit when it, there's a lot to, that they could play with of who which characters they, they want to bring in I think they'll try to bring in a lot I think so the Joseph, Nelly, the family, families that become one kind of. Wuthering Heights is very incestuous. A lot of it plays into character relationships, so it kind of really does depend on who they introduce from book, as well as who do they potentially add for Limbus kind of thing. So. It's going to be an interesting balance to see how they play it out and how they twist the narrative. Like, what are we even here for? I hope we're not here for her goddamn wedding. Uh, time to pop into 6-7. I think the only thing I've seen is a clip, is a still image from the front gate. Keep going until I hit the wall. I have more time tonight this time, so. You got proof on air. This is uncomfortable. The outfit or the standing in the storm? Oh, is it normal for these clothes to squeeze harder with every step I take? Oh, I've had that feel. This is what it means to maintain a hair of dignity. Once you get used to that feeling, you'll feel like you're missing something whenever you're dressed casually. What are you, having like a cinched? Um, uh, corset something kind of thing? So this must be the front gate to your former place of abode, Heathcliff? The massive gate alone feels downright intimidating. That's one big front door. It is a known fact in certain regions of the city the size of the front gate is an indicator of one's social standing. The magnitude of this front gate indicates the owner of this home is very affluent. Heathcliff, you picked on Hong Lu for being a rich kid when you yourself was raised at some huge mansion? <laughs> Ishmael. <laughs> Raised. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't mind at all. I do. okay. I haven't read all of Hong Lu's. Hong Lu, Heathcliff, very different situations for their upbringing. <laughs> at least from what I've read so far. I'm feeling a bit betrayed, actually. <laughs> Sir Heathcliff, thou <laughs> appeareth quite <laughs> different today. <laughs> Keep your stupid comments to yourselves. Some were teasing him and some were genuinely, genuinely surprised, but it didn't matter to Heathcliff. Every word he spat out was dripping with venomous spite. I wasn't even remotely close to being rich. I was never once rich in this manner. I wasn't even allowed to be content. Not even for a moment. In this manner. This manner never accepted me. Not even for a... Hmm. Damn. D uh, what the hell? 
a lightning strike. It seems to have struck an area near the forest. That was so loud. It's okay. Uh, I heard that it's extremely rare for lightning to actually hit people. A momentary musing reveals that a strike of leaven brings about a sensation that is not unlike the joy of fireworks. It fills the dark and cold void of the night sky with its incandescent brilliance, even for a brief moment before fading away into oblivion. Right, and in exchange it loses everything it has, burning and leaving nothing but ash behind. What joy is there to be found? I could hear s some forest critters fleeing, spooked by the thunderstrike. <laughs> oh, behold, a tiny squirrel over yonder. Okay, <laughs> I connect with Don on that. I uh, I am totally sometimes the kind of person to just go squirrel. Whoa, such nature is so close to home. I didn't know you used to live at such an eco-friendly place. Yes, I suppose I wouldn't ha have to go through the trouble of building a private zoo if I lived at a place like this. To have a garden or a forest so near the home, even if we were to ignore everything else, that alone indicates that its owner is someone of unimaginable affluence. Hmm, all right, I remember that Sinclair's home was in the middle of the forest, too. Squirrels, sure, but there were other animals roaming about, too. Sometimes when I was so miserable that I could hardly bear to even be in that manner, I'd go to the forest and not return for a long, long time. Oh, then this tiny forest friend, little Sir Squirrel, must have been quite the jolly companion for thee. Sir Squirrel? Did they kill the squirrel? The little squirrel that may have once been Heathcliff's tiny forest friend was immediately scorched down into a pile of ash the moment it crossed over into the manor's front gate. Th that was a weird lightning strike. Did it curve midair? The chance of such occurrence is extraordinarily low. It, it might be that I'm overreacting, but it looks as though that lightning was curving itself to strike exactly where that squirrel was standing. Is this their security system? Whoa, Heathcliff, I had no idea you grew up at such a dangerous place. I'm impressed you even survived. No, blindly, I've not seen anything like it. Right, Heathcliff, ready to knock on the front gate. The front gate. He stared blankly at the front gate of the manor. I've not knocked on this gate in a good many years. I once had to wait out here for hours because they all refused to let me in. Everyone except Catherine. She snuck out of the manor to open it for me. Don't talk her up. Walking through the heavy rain. Well, even then, I'm sure it won't be different this time. So if I knock, Catherine will come out to let me in. <laughs> Done. Huh. Heathcliff takes a deep breath before knocking on the front door. Huh. Nothing. That's not what I meant when I said it won't be different this time. Uh, we can try climbing over the fence. I think we can clear that height as long as we're okay with breaking our ankles. No. Heath was a whole bundle of anxiety before he knocked at the front gate, but perhaps this perceived slight reverted Heathcliff to his usual angry self. I was invited to this manor. This invitation would be meaningless if I were to leap over the fence. Catherine, I'm back. They've ignored you once, continuing to shout. Won't. Despite his efforts, not even a soul stirred beyond the front gate. 
None of us really believed that anyone would come out to greet him. But... Kath? The front gate began to creep open as though someone was answering his pleas. The makeover was worth it, hmm? I like that some of the artwork in between is a little bit more colorful than the game sequence. Nelly! Uh, interesting. The heavy rain and the tempest only grew harsher the closer we got to the manor. Though we have a law oh, made it past the front gate, not a soul doth appear. The bubbling excitement of sinners when they disembarked from the bus had all but disappeared. Silent air of apprehension surrounded them as they gingerly took their hesitant steps toward the manor. <laughs> Kathy, have you been well? No. Uh, Catherine, it has been a while, hasn't it? No, this ain't it either. In the midst of this aura of unease, only Heathcliff seemed to be preoccupied by something else. The rest of the sinners were... Did you catch that? A bird. A subspecies of sparrows, to be, perhaps. Lightning continues to strike aggressively. Even this far past the front gate. We would have been burnt to a crisp had it struck even a little closer. Lightning continued to blast the earth as though it wouldn't be satisfied until it reduced every little, every living thing in the manor grounds to a pile of ash. Is it gonna hit us if we walk faster? Or maybe it hits things that are moving too slowly? Maybe we should speed things up, I don't know. Our walking speed seems irrelevant. Instead, it's almost as if this lightning has a will of its own, striking with intent. This brings back some unpleasant memories. Oh, maybe it's like this house's defense system. Defense system? Did you imply this may be part of the manor security measures? That's what I was thinking, Hong Lu. Maybe it's only target things that enter the manor grounds without permission. I've seen security measures that are more precise and more conclusive than this. Larger manors often do install more effective security measures, after all. Oh, I think our family talked about installing a defense system at our home, too. It was one of those topics that kept coming up during dinner. That would make sense. Not that I'll understand the thought process behind these systems. Perhaps the security measures that prevent the before team from approaching the manor may be... Yeah. But we have, have the invitation with us. I think we'll be just fine. Is that really all this is? Is it just one of those normal security... security measures that every rich family supposedly has? I'm wondering, okay, before I hit to the next thing, maybe it's not just the security measures, but also maybe a combination of a security measure with the golden ball or the golden ball itself. Um, this is pretty interesting, though. I've heard that technology due to change the weather itself is really, really expensive to the point of it being inefficient. So expensive that I have not seen it myself. I remain silent because I don't want to concern the sinners with something I wasn't sure about. But the closer we got to the manor, the more confident I became that something was off. That this extreme abnormal, abnormal weather isn't the work of some security system. This absolutely has something to do with a golden ball. Okay, so it might not be a security system at all and just the golden ball combined with the manor itself? created the abnormal weather but this golden ball feels different from the ones we've encountered before it's a bit more chaotic huh? Huh? oh these flowers they've got color sinclair was right the mayor's garden was lightly littered with flowers they were the only things of color in this dreary sight I wonder what these flowers are called. Huh? I guess you can return the colors even to flowers if you cough up, cough up enough cash. Indeed. Then the proprietor of this manor must have held a particular love of these flowers. 
to return the colors of such transient things as flowers. Or perhaps it may simply be that they are pre preposterously affluent. Heathcliff gazed at the patches of violet flowers as he sung mused out loud. You're wrong. Uh, there was no particular love of these flowers. There was no room, no warmth in that heart to spare from mere flowers. Heathcliff appeared to have a doleful... Ear, so doleful that I felt as though he had built a tall, opaque wall between himself and the world. I could not bring myself to ask further. He did not tell us the name of the those flowers. Aigo, oh, oh, my, my, please come this way. Someone hurriedly runs this way from the manor's front door, holding a lantern. What awful weather. Well, Tifa friends, the Wuthering Heights Manors is rarely ever sunny, honey, but this is quite the storm. Long time no see, Nelly. My word, Heathcliff, is that you? It really is you. Mm. Yeah. You haven't the slightest idea how worried I was since you left. Have you been eating well? You have not been bullied by a rough crowd, have you? Bullied by a what? We wanted to hear from you for so long. Do come in now, come in. This Nelly regarded us with a curious look as though she did not quite understand what we were supposed to be. If I may be so bold as to presume... Uh, would you be our dear Heathcliff's friends? <coughs> <laughs> Say yes, Heathcliff. <laughs> yeah, um, well... Friends... Are we? The answer to that question hinges on the range of affinity one would define as a delineation that separates friends from acquaintances. Of course, we're friends. Precious, precious friendship forged in fire. Multiple fires, actually. Not wrong, Roja. <laughs> Your dear Heathless precious friends are about to freeze to their deaths in the rain, woman. My, what audible guests I welcome to this place today. I must be all over the place to leave you all standing in the rain. Come in now, come in. It's a tad warmer in here than it is outside. The interiors of Wuthering Heights was rather dark, yet this manor doth has color. Its hue appeared a tad faded from the original vibrancy, but there was color in this manor. What I tell you, I could see color inside this manor. Well, it's all bought by money, anyway. Uh, believe it or not, there was something about these lanterns hanging about the manor that brings back colors. Ah, the lanterns that return the object's original saturation. That's quite the expensive luxuries, are they not? It still doesn't bring all the colors back. Things still remain a tad gloomy. So, where's Kath? Heathcliff, please tell me of your life since you have left us. Where have you been staying? Have you been eating well? Oh my, have you lost weight? Oh, uh, I, I, I'm glad your delay wasn't too substantial. We've been... We have all been waiting for your arrival. We? Now let me get a better look at you. There are fine dress clothes, the hair, and my, you're certainly going into a right proper gentleman, haven't you? Quite the popular lad you are, with a posse of friends and all. Uh, well, did I? But of course, I would not have recognized you from a distance. Nella was talking so fast that Heathcliff wasn't spared even a second to get a single word. Nelly, was it? What is your precise relation to Heathcliff? As his precious friend, colleague, and comrade in arms, I cannot help but be curious as to how you two know each other. Otis, who was conspicuous, conspicuously scanning the interiors of the manor, suddenly asked Nelly the most transparently suspicious question I have ever heard. 
Oh, my, let's see. Heathcliff's... How should I put this? Nanny, I suppose? Nanny? What? Like, you wiped Heathcliff's snot, changed his baby clothes, and... Am I thinking of the right nanny? And when the baby's fussy about food, nanny spoon feed it to them. Oi, Nelly, quit teasing me like that. You aren't exactly my nanny, and you know that. We've known each other since we were both young. And I did not treat her like a servant or follow her around like she was my nanny. <laughs> Mind you, I am now the chief butler of this house. You must see the other butlers moving about like soldiers when I... I give the give a word. Well, you were the best at your job. Nelly, I'm... I'm getting quite impatient. I've got to ask. Heathcliff must have wanted so badly to ask her where Kathy was. So, when's the banquet starting? Instead, he hid his true question behind the mask of, of aloofness. But Nellie's expression became somewhat odd upon hearing Heathcliff's query. The banquet. Boy, when's that witless brigand coming? Is he even on his way? You can't just leave after gathering us all down here. If I have to sit any longer next to these mugs, I'm gonna lose it. I feel like it's the brother. I, I, it feels like the brother. There was a furious voice echoing from down the halls. Nelly, wait. I recognize that voice. My, don't rush. He just arrived, mind you. Let's do the other Heathcliff. Like I said, we've all been waiting for your arrival. Heathcliff bit his lips anxiously and followed Nelly. This doesn't feel at all like a manner that's about to throw a party. Yeah, that cruise ship party... This manner, you can't hide the rising sense of dread from places like these, doesn't matter how hard you try. This manner does not appear to have been a place where liveliness is an expected element. I see signs of rust cleaning conducted immediately before the guest arrives, several cracks and areas are in need of repair that have been identified as well. Also, I was scant inspecting a righteous parte, yet this is quite the depressing presentation. I followed Don Quixote to the halls. She appeared des terribly disappointed. Do we have a fight? This already has a fight. Okay. I guess we're throwing hands. Oh, two people sat at the dying... Okay, two people sat at a dying hearse surrounded by their respective posses. It was quite apparent that from the way they sat opposite one another, their relationship was far from amicable. On one end was a group, group of people dressed in mysterious masks surrounded by a jumpy looking man who looked like he was, he was one nudge away from hollering foul insults at everyone. On the other end was a group of people dressed in identical uniforms. Sinclair told me that they were wearing the outfit that most manor employees would wear, wear to each other. Uh, one of them stood out as he was the only one among them in a black suit. He appeared somewhat uncomfortable. It seemed as though he was in a great deal of pain merely by being here. And between the two groups were... Fixers! I recognize their outfit. Forsooth, they must be fixers. I'm, I hit the thing. I keep doing it. Good lord. Okay. Fixers, I recognize the outfits. Forsooth, they must be fixers from the Uffin Association. It is quite rare to even get a sight of single... Of a single Uffy fixer, they require it's quite the momentous occasion agent to even grace us with their presence. Shh, shh. 
We'll have time to ask for autographs later. All right? I had to coach Don Quixote, who was practically quivering from immediately running to them for signatures. Because we had unintentionally become the center of attention from the entire room. The center of a very negative attention. <laughs> Josephine? <gasps> oh! Okay, so Otis is... Otis is the Joseph. But they've also changed Joseph into Josephine. Very interesting. Okay. By gum, that vagabond has returned. The bl bloody shame of Worthering Heights. <sighs> Same old Josephine, huh? Look at him, strutting about like he owns this place. If our mistress were to witness this travesty. Oh, want to get rid of that. Gosh, Josephine, that's quite enough. Don't mind her, Heathcliff. This blessed this land of Wuthering Heights reduced to an asylum for vagrants and drifters. If the mistress had been here to witness this tragic, deplorable state of affairs... There was an old woman in the room who was muttering some choice words at us, ball staring with eyes full of hatred. Ah, oh, the witless brigade again returns, and quite delayed at that. How dare you show your face? Henley, please, exercise some restraint. Heathcliff, I hardly did expect your return. You have yet to let Catherine go. Still? It was clear that the two had both been acquainted with Heathcliff for a while. By the nature of the acquaintance was more of a long-standing hatred stemming from deep history of contention they shared. One of the two was hardly hiding his hatred, allowing it to see fully seized control of his words and actions, but the other one's hatred had sunk deep into his heart, boiling and writhing underneath. <laughs> oh. Right, I wasn't exact exactly expecting a grand welcome upon my return, but I ain't here to see your ugly mugs. It's not like you... It's like you always said, my base nature's just incapable of change. Heathcliff shoots back with just as much vitriol. As though he was always used to this kind of scorn and humiliation. <sighs> the man in the black suit turns away as though it would degrade him to even entertain him in him with an answer. But this man they called Hinley, <laughs> You unscrupulous <laughs> shite! <laughs> you bloody animal! No, a thing lesser than the savage beast! jumped up from a seat, his face turning bright red from anger. By the looks of it, you've lost yourself. A band of vagrants and vagabonds like you, eh? Crawling back to see if there is something worth pilfering from this place. You lot, beat his arse. And treat each him a lesson. Break a bone or two. No orders from boss. Shut it! I'm your boss's boss. I hired him and the rest of you. I don't expect these bonehead fools to give you much trouble anyway. Head of bone? What on earth is that fellow speaking of? He's just expressing his explicit desire to get his ass beat. Well, since he asked for it. I should change to Liu Ishii for this fight. Yeah, it's fine. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> if it wasn't clear, uh, Hinley is Catherine's brother, Linton is her suitor. Slash... Husband? I don't know if they're married yet. Get tremored. Do 
しまれちえっかなりちゃねよ I had seen that, but that's also very good. <laughs> the one time I used her, I, she never had the freaking final move. I'm so happy we get to have color now. Like, I think the Sepia thing being me. Her. Like, in concept, but it is kind of drab. ごはんすんのっちまん。よろぼんはじゅうしせっこよ。かじゃ。え。だしぼっこはぎんひんべっかよ。たいちょうけちがちょんみでやすん。ぶっちょんげくちぐらじゃいっと。That move's also very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure, 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 Good. Now I'll separate the bones from your flesh and personally introduce you to your own skull. Ryoshi, your your threats are getting turning into actual full sentences now. Oi, lads. A casual yet powerful voice booms from the hall, immediately breaking the tension in the room. I was gone for just a minute to get some water. What the hell happened here? This one's this big fucking manor, eh? Would have been faster to go. Oh, would have been faster to go bucket a cup of water from the well myself. Boss, we have a guest. So that's their boss. Yes, executive manager is immediately obvious from the way he walks and from the way he carries himself that he is someone quite experienced in combat. Right on times, so your lackeys are lacking. How can they hey, let these group of no-name hooligans knock them on their asses? Go on. Show them the meaning of pain. Looks like I've got to give my men some proper demonstration. The boss confidently strode toward Heathcliff. Then... Gave him a playful smack on the back of his head. Oi, lad. Ain't the first thing to do when calling back into your neighborhood to give a quick hello. Oh, oh dear, dear old boss. Where'd you leave your manners? Huh? You lot, wipe that stupefied look from your faces and bow before him. Come on, hurry up. Show some bloody respect. N what? N no, it can't be. The man wanted audit past both the aftermath of the brawl and the heavy tension that filled the manor, and her like he was out on a stroll. 
He just walked into the middle of it all, then put his arm around Heathcliff's shoulder. It wasn't the kind of friendly gesture. It was the kind of friendly gesture that only someone who's known Heathcliff for a long, long time could do. Heathcliff was a dead rabbit. This explains why he's an R-Corp rabbit. 